Hi, I'm Lima Milan, and in this video, we're going to look at programming automation in Ableton Live. So the first question is, what is automation? Automation is a representation of the movement of a parameter on a device within Ableton Live. Now, we can either program these in, which means you know, manually inputting via the mouse, or we can record these in using a controller and capture it as a performance. This video is focusing on the programming side. And the reason for this is accuracy and also being able to make things move in a way that a human simply could not do. So what I have here is a drum pattern and a bass line, and I want to automate the shape of my bass over time. So let me just play what I've got. Okay, so quite simple. The, the bass has an interesting rhythm to it and a note progression, um, but it's not moving. It's not the timbre or the shape of it isn't changing over time, and that's what I want to alter. So let's have a look at a couple of different ways we can do this. So first, I need to figure out what I'm going to automate. So whilst I'm playing my bass, I'm going to just go through a couple of these suggested controls, which are called macros, and I'm going to just play around with these to find what sounds good as I change it over time. Okay, so the most obvious one that changes the, the general shape of the sound is our filter cutoff here. So that's the one I want to focus on first. So in order to do automation, I first need to actually show the automation lanes. So there's a little switch here that you can press for automation mode, or you can press the A key um, to enable this as well. And immediately you see the view um, completely changes in terms of what information is available per track. Now, as I click around the different parameters, on my device, even if they're not the suggested macro controls, you'll notice the automation lane updates to show me the last clicked object. So that's really handy to very quickly edit the parameter you want to use. So I know that it's filter cut off, so just make sure that's the last thing I've clicked on this device itself. And then if I move up to the automation lane area, we have a line that represents the current position of that parameter. So you can see whilst my mouse is pointing over it, it says 140 hertz. And if you look down at the actual filter cutoff, you notice that they are in tally with each other. So that's 140 hertz as its static setting. Now we know that it's a static setting because that automation line, the red one there, is dotted, which means I can go in at any time and just move that parameter, but it's going to be fixed and to the point I go and move it again. Automation is going to intervene on that situation and just make the actual movement happen as part of a sequence. So we have a couple of different ways of getting into this. But the first thing I want to do is make this a little bit easier to actually edit. So like many of the areas in the Ableton Live interface, we can go to the edge of it and resize it. So I'm going to pull down the automation lane here. So I've got a larger work area to, to work with or play area. So. Um, Whilst we're in the actual the pointer mode, I can add in breakpoints. Now, breakpoints are literally lines for lines to move between. Uh, sorry, dots for lines to move between. So, for instance, if I want the beginning of my bass note to start off higher as a filter cutoff and then work its way down before the next note, I can put in a breakpoint here and a breakpoint at the beginning, and then literally just edit the height of that breakpoint. Now, it's not very noticeable to the ear, that one, so I'm just going to actually make that a little bit longer in terms of its position. Now, like many aspects of editing, when we have a snap function in place, at the moment it's snapping to the grid, and the grid is set to a sixteenth of a bar. So there's 16 individual slices per bar that this will snap to. But we can change that by using the actual the narrow or widen grid aspect of the grid. So Shortcut keys for this is Command and 1 or Command and 2 for narrow and widen respectively. So if I go back to here and I start changing the resolution of the grid, that's one way I can get a little bit more accuracy in relation to the position of these notes. An alternate approach is to actually just temporarily disable Snap to Grid. If I hold Command as I move 
I'm actually got a fluid control that won't jump to these grid lines as I work. So depending on your needs, whether you want to be slightly off the perfect position or whether you want to work robotically to these divisions of the bar, that, that dictates whether you'd use that function or not. Okay, so I've got an interesting sweep for the beginning of that note. Let's try a slightly different approach this time. So I'm going to draw in another breakpoint just by clicking and then create an increase to that value. But rather than it being a linear line, I want to curve this line instead. So linear meaning it's the perfect line between two points or the quickest distance. Um, if I hold the Alt key, you'll notice my pointer tool changes and it allows me to curve this actual line. So it can be convex or concave and move up or down in the respect of where it bends. So that one sounds very nice there. I'm not too sure on what it is doing here. I can't really hear any movement to that sound on that note. As you can see, we can see the notes in the backdrop of our automation lane. So they're a good guide to know musically where you might want to make your edits. So this is another area where we can make a bit of a modification to that specific part within our MIDI clip. So I'm going to highlight, click, and just drag the area where that note that I want to work on is. And then if I hold the shift key, I can start moving the position of that content up or down. So now it'll be a much more prominent sound because the filter is going to be higher up. Okay, let's maybe increase that break point a little bit more. Just reverse the kind of the motion of that automation. Okay, so moving on, we've been using the pointer tool all the time with this automation so far. This time I want to use the draw mode tool. So if we use the control click to get the function menu up, draw mode at the top of our menu there, which is the B key. So that's the quick way of switching between pointer mode and the, uh, the draw mode. So if I hold B down or click B, I can then draw in lots of individual movements. And at the moment, it's at the grid size of 32 divisions of a bar, so they're very quick. And this is what I meant earlier about non-human sort of based movements to a, to a sound. So let's see how that sounds. Okay, so that's kind of creating a wobble kind of move, movement, a very fast, rapid movement. So again, using our command one and two, narrow, widen the grid, let's just make the grid a little bit wider and draw in some less frantic changes to these automation parts over these different notes that I haven't in, sort of interacted with yet. So I'll just solo that out to make it a bit clearer. Okay, so it's quite muted, but there's a lot of motion going on there, and that's all through programming. Now, in the context of a larger arrangement or a full song idea, you wouldn't necessarily just have two bars that repeat like that all the time. So what we can do is duplicate this existing core idea a few times and make minor modifications as it travels to the motions of repeating to create a little bit more interest for, for the listener. So if I just go out of draw mode, I can highlight, so just click the first object and then hold shift and click the edge of the last object and I can use the duplicate command to create more repeats of this section. So control click and then duplicate. And if I just zoom out for a minute, just grabbing the top of the timeline there and pushing away, I now have twice the actual amount of uh, time being used for this idea. So this is an area where you can take a core idea, so a saying, and then modify other versions as it repeats. So I'm just going to jump in here, just click once into that area to make sure the whole thing's not highlighted, and then just make some more customized changes to 
these sections. So we should hear that there's a bit more variation from the first to the second. Now I'm not actually changing the position of these events, so the rhythm isn't changing, but maybe how bright it gets the second time will be slightly different. So again, it just creates a bit more interest to the, the user. So the shift command to pull that area up. Let me pull this one down a little bit. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Or a listen even. So quite minor there, but there is a slight difference in terms of the first repeat of that two bar section and the second repeat of that two bar section as well. So automation is useful for creating motion to sounds. That's one aspect of it. But something else that's useful with automation is to bring a sound into your song or to maybe take a sound away from your song as well. So the simplest form of automation could be a volume automation that we do. So let's do that. In arrangement view, if we click the actual mixer level for this track, we get that dotted line because it's at a static setting right now. But what I can do to introduce my sound before it repeats the second time is just slowly pull up the volume of the sound before it's fully introduced into my arrangement. So I like the level it's at, I don't want to interfere with that. So I do want to add though a break point there because at this point I want my sound to be at its full volume and then the two bars before I want to slowly introduce it. So I'm going to go from silence all the way up to it being fully introduced into my arrangement. So we're focusing on a very small area in this respect, but if you were to duplicate that to be eight bars or 16 bars, it could be that you slowly fade in the idea over four to eight bars. And then once that eight bars has passed, the whole idea is fully established and then the listener can fully engage with that with the natural arrangement of your track. So what we've done so far is we've shown automation mode and then we've used our pencil or our pointer tool to create various different edit types to our automation within the context in this case of our baseline.